Bonjour from Athens. As I was flying with my, well not with my, on the uh, airplane on the way to France yesterday, I was thinking of how I should capture your attention in order to understand exactly on how the situation is in Greece today. And all of a sudden I remembered this very old black and white motion picture very poorly developed, supposed to be a comedy, where there's this very well-known Greek comedian standing in the middle of the night under a light. And he's searching around. It's obvious he's lost something. This very authoritarian policeman comes along, very skinny, but authority was made up with his very big hat, you know, very demanding, and turned around and said to the gentleman looking, said, what are you looking for? He says, I lost a drachma. Hopefully this is not going to be prophetic in any way. And he says, where did you lose it? He says, well, I lost it over there. But over there was completely dark. And he says, why are you looking for it over here? He says, because this is where the light is. This is exactly where we are in Greece today. We lack the ability of seeing beyond of what we have exactly in front of us. People every day get laid off, get pay cuts. Young people graduate from universities without knowing what the day after should be. Fathers and mothers return home happily that they haven't been laid off the same day. But before they go to bed, they agonize of what's going to happen the next morning. Salaries have been slashed. Pensions have been slashed. And most importantly, the most important thing that has been taken the biggest hit is Greek pride. Because it's not a good thing to wake up every morning. And I'm not talking about our politicians or the hundred usual suspects that are on TVs all over the world every day trying to explain what happened and what is happening. I'm talking about the everyday man who's been worked hard for his entire life, waking up knowing that his image is tarnished globally. Especially when we belong in a union, the European Union, which was supposed to be a union of friends. And as you know, friends do not negotiate. Friends help. And now, we have been asking for help, having our pride attacked. And instead of being friends, we have borrowers, and we are the people that are benefiting, benefiting from the borrowing. So what can be done? Something needs to be done. As bad as the situation is, and as strong as the sight of the average Greek is, at his, as he's looking into the future without knowing what's going to hit him, hope can be discovered. Hope can be revived. And as ideological as this may sound, something that usually doesn't go together with prophets. But who am I to say, when there's a TEDx event called Humanism and Prophets, then there's obviously a stage to talk about this. And what is this? Well, it's time for the survival of Europe itself, because the Greek problem is not a Greek problem, it's a European problem. It's the time for romance to return to business. This used to be the continent of ideas. This used to be the continent of thinking. This used to be the continent of anything that has to do with innovation. Just a few weeks ago, I started reading in the Financial Times, as much as I understand because I'm not an economist, that the Chinese who we've been tracing, traveling, trying to, to follow, 
and becoming more globally competitiveness, competitive, sorry, are actually reinvesting in Europe. So as we are looking in what is it that they're doing, they're looking for the future into us. So we came up with this very small idea in Athens. What's been the problem so far in the way we do business? What's been the problem? Why has the vision been lost? Why do multinational corporations, or even smaller corporations, no longer have a vision of where they want to end up? Because they've lost the power inside. So what's the human factor? It's return to the human being. It is humanism. And in business, humanism means human resources. So we need to elevate human resources into the decision-making triangle and make the decision-making triangle into a square. Instead of just focusing on existing assets, growth, and spreadsheets, we need to add the human factor. And instead of di dictating to the human factor, factor down on what skills need to be acquired in order to create the new product or create a new model of growth, we need to add the human factor, make it a square, so we can all sit down and say, okay, the same way we try to figure out what our assets are, we deal with human brain as an asset itself, and we ask every each one of them to see how far we can go, and based on that, we develop a new growth model. And why is this important? Because that's the way you create visions. And it's visions that drive business. It's not spreadsheets. That's why romance, returning to business, is just, just, it's just not a philosophical idea. Is the way business in Europe is going to survive, excel, and become more competitive. We need to understand one thing. As good as someone can be at their work, if they have to fear every day returning home that they will not have a job tomorrow, then they cannot bring happiness. They cannot bring happiness. The family cannot follow. The family cannot follow. The children cannot respect and look forward to. When this doesn't happen, then the most important factor in human relationships, even most important than love itself, is admiration. How we admire each other. And once admiration is gone, then there's no such thing as a vision. So we need the vision to make the drive that's going to drive each person, the power they find inside of them, how it transcends to the family, to their inner circle, to a greater circle, to the business. The problem is we don't have time. Every second that goes by is a second lost. The return of romance to business is the answer to the financial crisis for Europe. Because it has to start exactly where it stopped, to the power of the human being. Now, will businesses do this alone? I'm afraid not. This needs various policy changes in what is the heart of the European Union, which is Brussels. Brussels needs to understand that multinational corporations should be supported at least in language of going in this direction. I don't know if you are familiar with the EU structural funds. We are, the we are the beneficiaries of those for the last few years in the south of, the Euro of Europe. Most of the funds directed from the fourth package available these years is for human resources. Let's have it returned there, where it's taking advantage of. People are being retrained in order to address new growth, but not as growth is dictated to them, but as they put themselves involved as part of the problem to find ideas for growth. And if that happens, then that will lead to people saving their pays, saving their jobs, 
making new positions. And there's also a big opportunity for those in services in this business where the multinational corporation cannot do this because it's actually stuck within a different box. Companies that can offer their services as hubs where they connect the multinational corporations with HR services, with universities, with funding from the EU. Is this easy? No, it's not easy. But just a few minutes ago, we stood here watching another gentleman trying to solve the water problem. So I'm very small to be talking about anything else. And in any case, if anything can start, it can start from TEDx. And if we are very serious, TEDx La Defense can be the beginning of a European movement that addresses just this. How to return romance into business and how to make the centerpiece of success in Europe the human being as it was the way we know through history. Thank you.